I got a brand new Asus ZenBook 14. I'm going to show you how to open it up and upgrade the NVMe SSD. Let's get started. Hey guys, Dale here. How's it going? <clears throat> Today I have a brand new Asus ZenBook 14 laptop that I'm going to do a little upgrading inside. I'm going to upgrade the SSD, the NVMe SSD, to a larger capacity. It comes with a 256 gigabyte. I'm going to bump it up to one terabyte. Um, just a quick overview of the laptop. This model has the Ryzen 5 4500U CPU. It comes with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 onboard memory. It's 4266 megahertz. Uh, like I said, the 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Of course, 14 inch full HD IPS display. Um, it has the Wi Fi 6, the Intel AX200 Wi Fi in it. Um, 13 inch chassis with the 14 inch screens. Got the zero or the nano edge design. I believe they say it's 92% screen to body ratio, which is pretty good. Um, it has the Radeon, AMD Radeon graphics plus the GeForce MX350 graphics as well. So it's a nice, slick little laptop, backlit keyboard. Over on the right-hand side here, of course, you have your power light, headphone jack, USB port, the A-style, and a micro SD card slot. And then your webcam and microphones up there on the screen. And over here, you have a C-type USB, HDMI, and another A-type USB 3.1, and your power cord goes right here, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shut it off and I'm going to talk a little bit about opening this bad boy up. I think I'm going to shut it off. No. But what I'm going to do once I get the new solid state SSD in there, I'm going to do a clean install of Windows 10. Um, there's no data on this, so I don't need to worry about that. <clears throat> there, it's powered off. So anyway, let me flip it over here. When you're working on a project like this, guys, just make sure you're in a good anti-static environment, either using a wristband or a mat, anti-static mat, or both. My bench tops, my floors, and my shop, and all my benches are all anti-static, so I, I'm covered there. Uh, this is the new SSD I'm going to put in it. It's the Western Digital Blue, the SN550 series. Um, we have to use an SSD like this that's flat on the back side because it's got a very low profile PCI Express slot in there that will only accommodate a drive like this. Now if you try to put in like this um, ADATA XPG drive, the SX8200 Pro, it's too tight of a fit because it's got chips on both sides. You're going to end up flexing it. You don't want that. Then here's a Samsung EVO 970 Plus SSD that's also flat on the back side. But in this case, I'm going to use the Western Digital. That's the one the customer wanted. It's a little cheaper than these other drives, but it performs very well. So having said all that, again, make sure you have the right tools. Now these screws that we have to remove <clears throat> are not Phillips. There are Torx. They call it Torx bit. It's the T5 Torx. So you want to make sure you have a good tool, the right tools, with a good, clean, solid tip to remove these screws. If you're not comfortable doing it, don't even try, because if you booger up these screws, you're never going to get them out. So I've already moved some, removed some of the screws, um, but in the back here, we have to remove these two rubber feet right here, because there's a screw underneath each one of those. So I'm going to get my tool in here and just kind of peel it up through self-adhesive, just like that. And the screw they use on these hinges here is a Phillips screw. Use a number zero Phillips. They're just a little heftier, because they're right by the hinge just for hinge support. So I'm going to grab my... Alright, cameraman, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab my number zero Phillips screwdriver here. Get those out of the way. All right, I'm going to take my Torx. I've already removed some of the Torx screws, but I want to get a couple out so you can just kind of watch how I do it. All right, this thing's still on. Just a minute, guys. As I shut down. Just a minute. <clears throat> just to make sure it's all the way off here. Which it's not. Just kind of 
it's stuck here. <sighs> Trials and tribulations. Come on. Always make sure your laptop's all the way off. We're going to disconnect the battery once I get inside there so it looks like we're good. All right, this, like I said, this is a brand new laptop right out of the box. There's no data on it we have to worry about. So I decided I'm just going to do a clean install, get all the drivers, Windows updates. But you just have to be very careful on these Torx screws. They're very tiny. The T5 is the size we're using here. So we got the four along the front here, one here, one here, one in the middle, and then these two Phillips screws back here by the hinges, okay? So we got all the screws out. Now I'm going to get my little plastic triangle spudger tool here. We're going to get in the seam, get it started. We're going to get right down in the seam here. Sometimes they pop up real easy, sometimes they don't. And this one did, good lord. Well. That one came up pretty easy, so that's a good thing. All right, so I'm gonna disconnect the battery right here. There's a little metal clip right here. If you get in here kind of close, you can see it. It has to push back just a little bit, just like this. Then this is gonna pull straight up. Just be very careful on using plastic here. So now we've disconnected our battery, guys. So a quick overview of what's inside here. Of course, we had our GPU and CPU protected under here. Really nice heavy-duty cooling fan, as you can see. This is the NVMe driver we're going to take out, but this PCI Express slot is very low profile. There's almost no clearance at all behind this. So we're going to remove this Phillips screw right here to get this out. And I'm using a magnetic number zero Phillips screwdriver. Gently, don't bend it up too far. I'm gonna get that out of the way. Put it on our new Western Digital here. There, make sure it goes in all the way. It's got a three cell, three cell battery right here. These batteries are good usually for about six to eight hours in these Zen books. So there, I got the new NVMe SSD in there. Um, this is our eight gigabytes of onboard memory right here. This is our Wi-Fi 6. It's soldered right under the main board, so there's no replacing that. Uh, these are our antenna wires, one on each side. This is a speaker system right here. And yeah, not, not a whole lot of room to move around inside of this little guy. All right, so let me go ahead. We got our drive in there. I'm going to do the clean install, but let's get our battery reconnected. Guys, put it in place and gently press down on it so we can slide that clip back over it. You can kind of feel it snap back into place. Just like that to hold it in. So we're good there. All right. So you can put, as long, like I said, whatever drive you, you use, guys, SSD, it's going to have to be flat. You just don't have enough room to put anything too thick in there, so to speak. So I'm going to put the cover back on. Reconnected our battery. These are really fast little laptops. I said this has a Ryzen 5. Those 4500s or those 4000 series are pretty snappy. I'm going to put the hinge screws back in here just for support. But I'm not going to completely button it all the way up with all the rest of the screws until I get windows, make sure everything's good, just in case. Alright, so we got those in. We're all snapped back in place. So now that's a bare drive. I'm going to take my USB Windows 10 installation 
flash drive here. I got a video on how to make one of these. You're just going to download the Windows 10 media creation tool right from Microsoft, the latest version of Windows 10. In this case, the 2004 edition. So I'm going to pop it in a USB port on the side here and see, let's turn it back on, if it'll just default to that as our boot device because there's nothing else to boot from currently. <clears throat> use a lot of these Western Digital SN550 series drives. They're pretty good. They perform very well. <clears throat> so there's our boot from our flash drive. I'm just going to choose 64-bit, of course, and hit enter. <clears throat> Load the necessary files. Get a good clean install of Windows 10. Um, on these Asus Zen books or the Vivo books, any of them, you want to make sure you go into the Microsoft App Store and get the My Asus app. So it'll control all like the hotkey function, on-screen display. You want to get that app, it's totally free. So English, United States, I'm going to hit install now. These installs go really quick for the most part. But it's a quick little, simple little upgrade. Um, just got to make sure you got good tools, guys, when you're taking out those Torx screws. Hit next, we're going to choose custom just to make sure. Yep, there's our one terabyte SSD we just put in there, unallocated. Hit next. I'm going to copy over all the files. I'm going to let this copy and do all this. It only takes a short time, and I'll be right back, guys. A little all right, guys, I'm back. So we're going to I'm going to walk we'll have your PC walk you through this real quick. Do. Turn down Cortana. Now I always choose, I don't have internet during these setups, it just goes a little quicker. You have to, <clears throat> otherwise they force you to set up a Microsoft account for signing into apps and Windows and just don't need that. You can do it if you want, but it's totally not required. Anything we skip during this process you can do later through the settings. Very simply. So we're going to choose United States, that's where I'm at. US keyboard, skip other layouts. I'm going to choose I don't have internet. I do, but we're just going to get through the setup quicker. Yeah, I'm just going to... I'll be a user today. No password. I like to turn off all this stuff just for privacy reasons more than anything. Again, this is all changeable in the settings in Windows 10. Hit accept. Hit no on this, that now on that. <clears throat> so get into Windows, I'll take a look, make sure our hard drive is all showing up good in there. And then I'll get all the Windows updates, and get a couple of apps, like the My Asus app, you want to get that. These Zen books are real nice, they're very thin, very portable, very well built, very good quality material they have on these ACs. I like it. Military grade quality they claim. Be nice if we get up the memory of the RAM on it, but we can't. But it's got 4266 megahertz onboard memory, so it's very fast. Make sure you check out more of my videos. You can watch a video on how to create a USB Windows 10 ins installation flash drive. How to I do a lot of a lot of other models with the SSD and memory upgrades. I appreciate y'all watching. Almost there, guys. All right. All right, so now it's going to start searching for stuff, but we're not connected. I don't care about that right now, but I'm going to go to File Explorer. And here's our one terabyte drive. So we're good to go there. As long as I'm doing that, let's check our task manager real quick. So 
here's our CPU, our Ryzen 5 4500. Here's our memory, 4266 megahertz. It says slots used, two of two, so this is gonna be dual channel, which is good. All right, so there's a quick little upgrade we did from 256 solid state NVMe to one terabyte. Now they'll have, the customer's gonna have a lot more room for a lot more stuff. So again, thanks for watching. If you like it, um, give me a like. If you love it, give me a subscribe. That would be great. Y'all have a great day.